Hi, Tom Bodette. Of all the things invented in 1962, some have faded away, like cassette tapes, and others are still very much with us, like lava lamps and Motel 6. Yep, Motel 6 is celebrating 50 years of giving travelers a good night's rest and saving you more for what you travel for. But we're just getting started. In fact, the longer you watch us, the better we get. Kind of like a lava lamp. Trippy. I'm Tom Bodette for Motel 6. 50 years and the light's still on. As a man, you know what it's like to break your back on a daily basis. Introducing new Bud Silver, the beer for hardworking men. It's just what you need after a day of assembling flat pack furniture. But instructions are cast aside in favor of intuition. Working with one eye on the job and another on the TV. A day when you're told it looks a bit wonky at least 40 times. Hardworking men want a fuller tasting, thirst quenching beer. New Bud Silver. into the show to the morning show right here on hot jams 98.9 of course y'all know i am the one and only kenny lee and so glad to be in your company on a good good morning you know because i know some of y'all are probably just not getting up and getting ready to start your day some of y'all may be on y'all way to work or getting those kids ready for school but you are certainly preparing to do what you do best y'all right here on hot jams 98.9 i tell you all i bring y'all nothing but the best you know when we talk about so much that's going on throughout the country and a lot of stuff that goes on throughout the city and when we deal with celebrities when we deal with artists when we deal with anybody in entertainment or people who does stuff who support the kids it's always good to hear from good people but on this morning, we're going to turn our tables over, and I got the entertainment news coming up for you all, and also celebrity news, and I'm also going to give you all the latest on what's going on with Pyramid High School, but right now, we want to turn our attention to former NBA star Lorenzen White. Of course, you all know Lorenzen White, was, uh, his body was found back in 2010, right here in the bluff city of Memphis, but Lorenzen White was just not a... NBA star. He was also a father. He was also a friend. He was a brother. Lorenzo Wright did a lot for the community. And he loved kids no matter what. He always made sure that he did for the community. And that's what we want to remember him by. A couple of weeks ago, uh, the Ride of Tears organization did a ride in honor of Lorenzo Wright because we thought it was best to do. Of course, you all know that I serve as the vice president of the organization. So we did the ride and his mother was there, Miss Deborah Marion, family members were there because I think that at that moment with so much going on with the case right now, of course you all know that the case has not been to trial yet so they're still awaiting trial but we did him a ride in honor of Lorenzo Wright and today on the show I am I have on the phone lines with me his mother Miss Deborah Marion herself. Good morning Miss Marion and welcome into the show. How are you doing today? I'm doing just fine. How are you doing? I'm doing wonderful, honey. I'm doing wonderful. I tell you, Miss Miriam, first of all, I just want to just thank you for just taking the phone call. I know you are a very, very busy person. And, you know, I've been watching all of the news stories that's been going on on the news and, and the cases that's been going forward. And I must tell you, Miss Mary, you are a strong mother. You're a strong person. Because to go through what you have went through, I think no mother should have to go through what you went through. And Thank you, a lot of people, you know, know Lorenz and Wright, you know, for playing the ball and, and being in the community, but you know him as your son. Yes. And so let me ask you this. Tell us what type of person was Lorenz and Wright when he was off the court? He was just friendly, goofy, he's the type of person, he, he got up charter bus for the Wright family and the Vassal family to go to Dallas, Texas. Mm. This boy goes and spends a thousand dollars on tricks, like he a musician, and, and really some kind of auditorium so he could perform for us. Mm. He was just goofy like that. Man. Mm, mm, mm. So yes, he, he was. Yeah, so he played for the Memphis Grizzlies, he played for the Seattle Knights, uh, he played for... Yeah. 
the Seattle Hawks, okay. Seahawks, Seahawks. Seahawks, okay. So he played for a number of teams. So let me ask you this, being that, you know, he was an NBA star and, you know, he was out, you know, in the it made him a, it made him an icon, especially here in Memphis. You know, as as your son, did you feel that at any point, because I know that Cheryl Wright, of course, you know it's his ex wife, but did you feel any any point that you feel like she wasn't the person for him? What what is your input on for Shara and, and, you know, being his ex-wife and how did their relationship go? Well, see, actually, first of all, I didn't know how old she was. Had I known my son was 17 and she was 22, that would have been a whole different story right there. Wow, so he was 17 when she met yeah. him? Uh-huh. Wow, I didn't know that. But, well, his dad was an AU coach and her dad was an AU coach and her, her days got her out of the bus with him. Okay, okay. So that's how they met. Okay. So yeah. I guess over a course of time once he began to play ball, you know, they, they, they got married and of course like any couple do, they have kids. At what point do you think uh because how many kids do they have together? Big part now you. No, no, I was saying how many kids do they have together? Oh six. They have six kids together. So, at what point do you think that their relationship took a turn for the worse? Uh, it was back in 2000. I forgot, 2006, mm -hmm. five or six. Mm -hmm. But they had a, a marriage, you know, a few months before that. So, I where they don't spend all this money on this second wedding. I know they couldn't do the right thing this time. Exactly. But it's been mm. paying up that way. Mm, mm, mm. So let me ask you this. Do you think that, and I know this this is a question a lot of people have probably asked you, do you think that Cheryl Wright was going to kill your son before she did what she did? Well, see, I had told him years back that mm -hmm. this girl going to be there for you, boy. I said, I don't know what's going to happen, but this girl going to be there for you because she was just a little too much for him. Mm. But he couldn't see it. He was young, you know, so he couldn't see it. And I didn't want to break his heart, so I just let it go after I found out, you know. Right. So, you know, while, you know, they were married and everything, what type of person was Cheryl? Selfish. Mm. Selfish. Only person you worry about is one she can see in the mirror, just like Michael Jackson says, so you can see in the mirror. Mm. So do you think a lot of the money and stuff that she got, do you think she did the right thing, you know, as far as the money is concerned with the kids? Well, actually, since she tried to raise some bail money, see, that's the wrong thing to be raising some bail mm -hmm. money. She needs to be raising some money to pay my grandkids their million dollars back. Mm -hmm. You know, if she said something like she was going to try to raise some money for that, I might have well dumped on her bandwagon too. But she's not trying to get my grandkids their million dollars back, so I'm not, uh-uh, uh-uh. Mm -hmm. So let me kind of back up a little bit, Miss Marion. When Lorenz and Wright first went missing, did you get a phone call? How did that day go? Well, I had been looking for him, you know, and I already filed a missing person report, you remember, early on. And, and you know, that's why they had started looking for him when it took me, they found it took me serious, you know, because he, he hadn't, he wasn't answering on Laura's call, his oldest daughter, because he gonna answer her calls and my calls. Uh, he'll go call us back and tell us to call who he don't want to talk to, call so and so, ask him what they want. And she and I got together on the phone. She said, Grandma, Mama, he asked me to answer my calls. He's or calling me back. Mm. And to this day, my granddaughter came to my house when they would sit on the porch. She said, Grandma, do you know if you hadn't reported my dad's missing, they still would have been looking for him now because nobody else wanted to report it. Mm, mm, mm. So when you reported him missing, uh, what what took place after the, did the police start to search? I mean, and how was Shara acting at that moment? She was acting concerned. Okay. So did she, she offer? To, did she offer to put up any money for a reward? Not a dime. Not a dime. Not a dime. Mm. So after you did the police report and they put the word out that Lorenzo Wright was missing, did she call you and say, you know, uh -uh. was she concerned about his whereabouts? Nope, nope, nope. Nobody but the oldest daughter, Laura. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you this. So the day that they found his body, tell me what happened that day. Ooh, honey, it was the worst day ever. 
I was, he had gave me this comforter and I don't never, uh, my wash wasn't big enough for it. So I took it to the large man and I had called Dennis McNeil early on and told him that we couldn't find him. And he told me to call the police where he was last seen it. So that's what I did. Cause he, he, he told me, you know, that wasn't in his jurisdiction. I had to go over there and I told him no, because at that time she was dating a police officer and I didn't know what department he worked in. So I wasn't going to make no missing person report at an office to risk him spread my son's stuff, you know. So I just, mm -hmm. I, I told him to meet me at Kroger Park a lot of They met me in the hot sun, 102 degrees. Mm. Cause at that time I was too loud. I hear police and my son did that. Uh, uh, so I'm ain't right with this. Exactly, exactly. But I told them when they found me, it was not going to be good. I told them. Mm, mm, mm. So after they found his body, did you go to the scene that day? Yes, huh? And, and see, me and my kids, well, my family, all of us got this spirit. That's why we knew he didn't get kidnapped because him and my nephew already had a plan. They might they ever got kidnapped. Whether they were together or apart, they always had a way to get away. Mm. But uh-uh, did not let go down. Uh-uh. Mm. They had his funeral at the uh, FedEx Forum, uh, where the Memphis Grizzly plays at. Um, and I, I saw you on the uh, camera because they showed you numerous of times. How how did that go for as you going into that funeral, knowing that this was uh, going to be the last time you was going to uh -uh. see him? Uh uh, Hon, I wasn't even there. Oh, they didn't. I, had, I, I, I doubled up on my medication. My body was there, but my mind was on the other side of town. Mm mm mm. Man, I I know it was I know that was a hard pill to swallow. Did you ever get to see his remains at any point? No, no I didn't want to see him. I did not want. If they ever let me go up there that day, I would have been good because I would feel like if I had walked in his steps, maybe he would gave me some vibe of what's going on. That's the only thing I want to do, just walk in his last steps. And if I hadn't had those sandals on, I would have, if I had my tennis shoes on, I would have hit that police woman in the chest so hard my chest. I would have broke that bulletproof vest off of her. And I would have been gone. I throw those shoes in the garbage when I got home. Mm, mm, so they would mm. basically hold me down because I would have made it down there to my baby. Mm, mm, mm.